Welcome to Two Chicks in a Horror Flick, a weekly horror movie review podcast. I'm Tawny Ray. And I'm Felicia Connor. Subscribe to get new episodes every Wednesday. We dive into trivia, drink a little whiskey, and of course, give our no BS opinions. Join our Discord server or message us on social media to talk all things scary. And if you like this show, consider supporting us on Patreon. You can find all these links on our website, twochicksinahorrorflick.com. Thanks for listening. Now let's get scared. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Today, kicking off our month of found footage movies, we are going to do Noroi, The Curse, which is a Japanese movie from 2005. So, um, yeah, but before we get into all that, Felicia, what are you drinking? Today I am drinking water. Nice. Yeah. Water. (laughs) And um, the people who are listening can't see, but you got a red lip on again. Mm, Yes. So, Tawny, every time I see you, I'm like, because when I was doing makeup, when I used to be a makeup artist, I, oh God, you guys, I have like 50 lipsticks. Yeah. I've been seeing some pictures. Totally. She's been sending them to me. Yeah. That was before. I got the more lipstick, but all bright colors, some nudes, but I always used to love to wear reds and different bright colors and I just haven't. So I was inspired and yes. So now, yes, it is Mac. It is called passion. So, Mm. um, Mac is having a big sale. I think still, and they had like, I think this is a a normal regular color, so it's not going to be like a discontinued color, but they have like limited edition packaging. Like if this was like a Christmas packaging or, you know, if they did a collab with someone and it was in special packaging, um, but their classic colors with special packaging were like half off. Like they were super. Yeah. So yeah, it's called passion. If anyone likes it and it's Mac. Oh, and the lip liner is cherry. Mm, Okay. I was just thinking I need to probably also get some lip liners. I have some like really old ones, but they're really old, like years old. So they're all dry and not doing it, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it's crazy how many shades are. I got three new lip liners and I, I mean, I already have five, I think just red. And, yeah. But each of them are a little bit different when you're using yeah. them. Same with the nude. Like I wore a nude lip uh, last week. And I thought the lip liner was, you know, pinky enough, but it was too brown and they made the whole lip like brown, mm. you know, it's crazy. <laughs> Weird. We've been talking a lot about this um, yes. lip colors and the different lip colors. I love um, your lip color. That's yes. Nice. This is one of the ones that you sent me. OK, yes. so we were again talking about lip colors and I was like, I really want like a deep red, like a like a burgundy type red, but I can't seem to find any because as soon as you get dark, they start becoming purple. And I think like anything like blue or purple on me looks makes me look dead and it's bad for my skin tone. And so Felicia, being the wonderful, thoughtful, um, makeup obsessed friend that she is, (laughs) went and did a bunch of research and sent me some lip colors. And so this is the darkest one of the two. And I really like it. It is this like very dark, So I'm like wearing it. It's like not the season for this, right? But I figured I'd wear it. It's always the season for anything. It's just like springy, you know, it's like bright reds and light colors and it's like sunny as fuck. And I'm like, goth burgundy lip. (laughs) No, it looks beautiful. You don't look goth at all. I'm so happy because I did, since I don't see the colors in front of me, I watched YouTube videos of people swatching them on different colored skin, on their lips, on their, like (laughs) the the website, just to see, does this at all purple? And and so I picked the two that I thought, look, yeah, because the majority as they start getting dark are totally plum or totally purple. And I've ended up with a ton of different plums because I'm like, I'll try this. I'll buy it and try and go home and put it on. And it always looks fucking weird on me. But this is a winner. I wore nice. it out to dinner, too, the other night. And it's do you know the name? Color. I think oh, I don't remember. One of them is called Sin. Yeah, one Sin. And the yep. other one's Diva. Yep, yep, yep. But I can't remember which of those is the darker one. I would guess Sin. I don't know. Just based yeah. on the name. Oh, shoot. Yeah, I don't remember. Okay. I didn't bring it with me either, but um, anyway, so that's uh, what's happening in our lip land. Yep. Um, for for drinks, I'm also drinking water. Nice. Yep. Some nice, refreshing, hydrating water. 
good old uh, Sunday afternoon hydration. Yep. <laughs> yep. Can't be getting fucked up for the week <laughs> on a Sunday. Um, okay, so what have you been watching, doing, listening to, reading? Been oh, reading so much. Yes. Um, I don't oh, shoot, I don't remember. I think I mentioned this last time, but I'm still reading Flicker in the Dark. And if I didn't mention it, I'm reading Flicker in the Dark. And it is, I was so proud of myself. I have so many books, as a lot of us book lovers do, that I have purchased and never read. So I was in between books like reading with Mark and Erica book. We're not reading a book together right now. Okay. Um, and so I went up to my bookshelf and I said, hmm, you. And I picked it and I said, I'm going to read it. I'm going to read something off my bookshelf. It was one I got a couple years ago from the Book of the Month Club, Flicker in mm. the Dark. And uh, it's very interesting so far. I, I think... I don't think this is given away. I think this is because it's right in the beginning, but it is about, um, I really don't know what it's about, except that these two grown people, when they were kids, they found out that their father was a serial killer of these little girls in their neighborhood. Oh, That's okay. it. That's all I know right now. So yeah, it's good. It's a good read. And I, of course I'm reading my Jewish study books and just, just so you guys know, because I don't, I, Tawny doesn't know this. Last episode, we talked about um, I'm finishing my conversion for Judaism. And the reason I'm saying it that way is because wh where we started it and then 30 minutes later where we ended it, I removed that whole thing. There was just oh, okay. a nice beginning and end to it. So yeah. I removed it. So you got no one heard that from the last one. So, oh, OK. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I'm doing. So she's, yeah. So update for everybody else. <laughs> yes. She's and then finishing. we do have the conversation. We could share it if you're interested, but yeah. Yeah. Um, that's cool. Yeah. Is there any update on that? I'll probably have a lot to share. I just got the, um, the book the rabbi wanted me to read. It's all of the Jewish laws from the Seraphitic Jewish tradition because he's a Seraphitic Jew I hope I'm saying that right. Um, and that is just like uh, European Jewish ancestry or like Middle Eastern Jewish ancestry. And so mm. his is from that area, Spanish, Middle Eastern Jewish ancestry. So, I mean, a lot of it's the same, but because they're different parts of the world, there's cultural effects on both. Um, and so that's what I'm reading. And whoa, I can't wait to meet with him to talk to him about it. I mean, it literally tells the men what shoe they need to put on first. Interesting. Yeah. What, uh, how to tie your shoes, how there's so many laws. So, um, yeah, that's huh. what I'm learning right now. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How, Oh, and, um, one thing I do want to mention, I haven't watched a lot because I'm so busy at work. I have a class, so it's busy, busy, but last night binged a couple episodes of invasion on Apple TV. It was like, the, the alien invasion around the world from five different sets of eyes. I'm like, oh, yes, please. So far, I really like it because it's like a slow burn, you know, with like the quiet place. It's like, we're fine. We're at a baseball game. Aliens! Oh, yeah. This is like, it's growing. People still don't really know like what's going on. Is, is there a war? It's slowly spreading. It's very interesting. Hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I canceled our Apple TV after Ted Lasso ended. So uh, are you going to start like it up with their severance comes on again? Probably. I hope that's not anytime soon. <laughs> it, do you know? Is it? <laughs> no, I haven't seen anything. coming Okay. Over. <laughs> I'm just trying to like it's save money. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, that would suck. I'd be like, oh, canceled over a month and then it came back. <laughs> then at that point, it doesn't make sense. Might as well just keep it. Um. OK, cool. Yeah. So that's a lot. It has yeah. also been very busy for me at work, too. Like, yeah, what's going on with you? Kind of struggling a little bit, just keeping my head above water, it feels like. Um, so I haven't done a ton either, but um, the couple updates I have is, number one, did you know that The Great is back? What? The, what is that? The, the what? Great. The Great. Oh, The Great. Is back. I thought you said <laughs> yeah. The Great. Yes, me and my oldest have been watching it since she got home. Okay. Yes, okay, cool. yes, yes. I keep meaning to tell you and then oh, I just keep yeah. forgetting like, but you I forgot to share that. No, that it's so good. Yeah. So we, we've only made it like two episodes into the new is newest season. 
But God, I love that show. And then our friends started, Paige and Trevor started watching it too because we kept telling them like, you need to watch the show. It's really great. And they were like, <laughs> at first they weren't digging it. And then they were like, by the end of the first episode, they were like, okay, we're we're in. We're going to keep watching it. So um, yeah, watched a couple of those. And then <laughs> because I feel like an idiot, apparently you could have watched this movie that we're going to talk about, Nordoy. You can watch it on YouTube. I didn't know that. I don't know oh, if you knew that. You probably still have Shudder. I watched it on Shutter, yeah. Okay, I don't have Shutter anymore, so I had to like purchase like a month of AMC or Shutter, but I did AMC just to have like more access to stuff. So I purchased like a month of that, which now I'm kicking myself. I wish I would have just watched it on YouTube. But I feel like I have to get my money's worth now <laughs> out of that. <laughs> and I fucking thought Yellow Jackets was on AMC. So that's what I was like, oh, I'll just watch Yellow Jackets over the next month and then I'll cancel it and only have it for a month. Apparently, it's not on AMC. I think it's oh, on no. some other one, maybe Showtime or something. So bummer. And then I was like, what the fuck else am I going to watch on AMC? And I looked through the catalog a bunch, and I saw that they redid the um, interview with the vampire oh. as a TV series. So it's oh, okay. like a longer format. I've only watched one episode, but I was like, this is fucking good. Like, the acting is really good. The atmosphere is really great. I feel like they're definitely hitting that, like, New Orleans old world vampire you know coming to the new world kind of it's it's really good so far so i'm excited to keep watching that my goal is to mm. finish that before my trial is or my month is up so i can just cancel it and then i f- would feel better about it oh that sounds good because i loved yeah. interview with a vampire yeah it's a great movie hmm. and it, i feel like it's it's a little different you know like whole new cast and everything but yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I'm like, damn, it's it's nice to put something on and be like, mm, they put a lot of work into this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Instead of kind of just like, I don't know, flippant <sighs> stuff. Yeah, a lot of these new TV shows, you can just tell they're, uh, I don't know. Yeah, it feels like, like, it just feels like there's not a lot of thought or effort put into it kind substance, of. Substance, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. No, something about this. I'm like, this feels really like meaty right away so i'm excited i'll keep you updated as i watch it um that's it and then i did start the book you sent me okay okay my oldest did too because she got one for herself okay i i'm not very far in i think i'm like okay i don't know i'm like a few chapters in like it's not not very far but it's good so far yeah i hope it's enjoyable at least yeah i think it will be okay it seems like a fun fun one so far so we'll see okay good yeah but that's all really that's been going on for me so all right we did finish our patio thing did i tell you or oh, no you probably so saw pictures pretty. online i saw yeah. pictures yes you, you sent me pictures yeah yeah very excited about that we put like a shade thing over our back deck and it's like one of the first projects i was like we need to do this because it's too sunny on the back deck so you can't actually like sit out there for half the day And it's so fucking nice, dude. Like, it's already just been a game changer. Like, Jade and I went and did, like, lunch on the patio or on the back. I keep calling it a patio. That's not, it's not a patio. I don't know. What are the fucking actual technical terms? Well, it's like a, well, I get maybe a deck. Yeah. Because it's raised and wood. Yeah. Maybe. But what's a patio? I mean. Yeah, I feel like a patio is. I think it's a patio. Raised. Like, it's like on your second floor or something. Anyway. Oh, it is. So it's not that. No, that's a balcony. Oh, <laughs> well, the, OK, so it's a porch. That just must be in your front yard. <laughs> There's. <laughs> oh, yeah, because a wraparound porch, right, is yeah. wood and raised. So it's a yeah. porch. Who fucking knows? Now I'm starting to feel like they're all just the same. Wor- they I just mean the same thing. The same thing. <laughs> OK. Yeah. OK, good to know. <laughs> Um, anyway, but we went out there and ate lunch for a couple days in the week and it was really nice. I was like, this is the work from home equivalent of like going out somewhere to eat, you know, in the office when you'd be like, fuck it, let's just get out of here and go get some lunch or whatever. And it's such a freeing feeling. That's how I felt eating. Oh, that is so awesome. That makes me happy. Yeah. Yeah. Because when you're in an apartment, right, you have that like little balcony thing, but it's not like really just different. Yeah. And people walk by and it's weird. And yeah, we never did anything like that on our apartment like patios because it just was like you're saying it's weird. Yeah. Like, oh, hey, 
especially being <laughs> on the first floor. So people walk right by you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's very cool. Yeah, so that's exciting. And we finished our pantry thing, too. So Jade um, built that with the help of his coworker. So thank God, because it gave us so much more storage. It's been a total game changer. So big projects over this last week for the house. That's awesome. I'm so yeah. happy for you guys. It's exciting. Thanks. I love it. I love hearing about it and seeing how it all takes shape. I I need to be better about posting pictures and stuff. I'm like, I don't know. When I get really busy, like being online is one of the first things to drop off my radar. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I haven't been like active a whole lot, either in our Discord or on social media. Like I just, I don't know. Things start to fall off that I don't feel like I have the mental capacity for. And those are always the first to go. But I'm like, I want to share stuff with people so that, you know, you see what's going on. I feel like it's cool. I love seeing what other people are doing with their houses and renovation projects and stuff i'm just not good about posting so yeah we know this I'll about do. you yeah <laughs> we Glad. still love you we know we know we'll get pictures one day when you're ready eventually i'll do like a retrospective like here's what happened for the last like three fucking months yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> That's um fun. anyway okay anything else new with you before we jump into this movie no i mean i do want to say one thing is random but I, maybe some people care i was so proud of tt last night we all went to sushi and she ate sashimi octopus because that's one of my favorites yeah she ate that she ate the spicy tuna roll crunch roll and this ak-47 roll and she usually we just get her like the little kids meal she literally got spaghetti but okay. then as the rolls came, she's like, I want to try it. And she started eating all the sushi. I was just really surprised because she's nine and she's like eating sushi. <laughs> yeah. Has she not tried it before? Mm -mm, she hadn't tried it before. Okay. So interesting. That's it. I was just excited, which I shouldn't be because sushi's expensive. It's way better <laughs> when you can just buy her chicken True. nuggets and we could buy the, eat the sushi. Now everyone's eating my octopus. Stop. No, yeah, this was bad. <laughs> yeah, yes. you should have been like, yeah, no, everyone you won't like this. My, everyone eats my crab too. Like <laughs> enough. <laughs> yeah, you gotta stop sharing. I do. Is your problem. I gotta stop saying mm, this is so good. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta put on a show. You gotta lie, lie to people. Just yeah, be like I don't. I'm ordering this, but I don't really like it. It's kind oh, sometimes of this is Yeah, sometimes this is good, but God, this one is not good at all. Yeah, like, just keep eating it. <laughs> Yes, I do need to do this. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. That's adventurous. Yeah. Definitely. But that's it. No, nothing else. I'm ready. Okay. Okay. So let's do it. We're talking about Noroi, The Curse from 2005. It is directed by Koji Shiraishi. I'm just going to butcher all these names. So sorry. I'm going to do my best. Um, For Cats, who also has done a ton of found footage, but I had not like... I didn't hear really of any of them. I think the only other movie that I had heard of is called Grotesque, and I've seen it. I've seen like the poster of it somewhere on these many streaming platforms, but that is it. So um, for cast, I just did like the top people because there are a lot of people in this movie. I did Jin Maraki plays Masafumi Kobayashi. Ryo Kano plays Kana Yano which was interesting. That's like a weird name to have with your character name. They're similar. Anyway, Tomono Kuga plays Jun Junko Ishii and Marika Matsumoto plays herself. She's actually an actress, famous actress in Japan. So um, let's see. I actually have a note about that. Let me find it. She was the actress and voice behind a character in the Final Fantasy video games. So... Uh -huh. That's neat. I don't know if I would want to play myself in a like a scary possession movie. Oh, really? You no. Know, like this is Felicia Connor and it's like my life and there's some possession. I mean, I, I would, but I think I'd be kind of scared too. To to play yourself. Interesting. As though there, yeah, like in my life right now, there's like this dark evil spirit and curse. Because then to film that movie and then separate it from reality when, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. I don't feel like it would be weird to me, but I've also never done it, so who knows? <laughs> um, for scores, IMDb gives this a 6.9 out of 10. Rotten Tomatoes gives it a 75%, and Letterboxd gave it a 3.7 out of 5. 
Um, I also could only find a budget number and it was two million, which makes sense. Like it's a very s- small budget feeling type of movie, especially just being found footage. So let's jump into Two Minutes with Tawny. Turn back now if you don't want this spoiled for you. It's a little longer because there was a lot happening. So I kind of struggled to like narrow it down. <laughs> so bear with me here. Kobayashi is a paranormal researcher who has produced a series of books and documentaries on supernatural activity around Japan. During the process of making a documentary titled The Curse, Kobayashi disappeared after his house burned down and his wife Keiko was found dead in the ruins. The aforementioned documentary begins to play. I also kind of like took some uh, paragraphs from Wikipedia and like inserted them into my recap because some parts were like really hard to describe. So Just saying, this isn't my full work here. (laughs) Um, Okay, so that's the beginning of the movie. We see, um, from there, we see a series of vignettes from his footage, including an attempted interview with a woman named Junko Ishii, whose neighbors keep hearing crying babies, TV programs about psychic children, where we're introduced to Kana, who seems very skilled at picking up on messages, a famous actor named Marika who had a paranormal experience at a shrine and a psychic man named Hori who covers himself in tinfoil. Hmm. Kobayashi visits each of these people and Kana disappears. Marika, the one who was at the shine, shrine, heard a voice there and since then weird things have been happening to her. She gets up in the night to tie ropes, ropes into knots but doesn't remember it. Kobayashi sets up a camera to record her at night and captures a voice saying Kagutaba. This leads him to visit a local historian who tells him that Kagutaba is the name of a demon. The residents of a village called Shimokij once... Fuck it, I'm sure I'm not saying that right. Once summoned Kagutaba, but imprisoned it for disobeying their commands. An annual ritual was performed to appease... Kagutaba until the village was demolished in 1978 to make way for a dam. The final ritual, which was filmed, was performed by a priest and his daughter. At the end of the ritual, the daughter became hysterical. Tanimura, this is the historian, says that she was believed to have become possessed by Kagutaba. Kobayashi discovers that the daughter is Junko Ishii. He learns that Ishii worked at a nursing school where she helped perform illegal abortions and stole the fetuses. Lots of people who lived by Junko or Marika all commit suicide or die. Over time, Marika's symptoms symptoms get worse, and her and Kobayashi go to where the old village was to perform the ritual. This seems to help her, but at night, Hori runs into the forest. Kobayashi follows him and they come across slaughtered dogs and eventually find a ghostly kana with fetuses crawling all over her. Kobayashi and his cameraman get Hori and Marika to the hospital before going back to Junko Ishii's house. There, he finds Junko's hanging dead body, Kana's dead body, and Junko's son sitting over her. He puts together that Junko was trying to replicate a ritual to summon Kagutaba by feeding a medium, which is Kana, the fetuses. Kobayashi takes in the boy because it turns out that he wasn't related to her at all. Hori breaks out of a mental institution to visit the boy in Kobayashi's home and tries to kill him, saying that he is Kagutaba. And he also thinks that Ka- he, like the boy was a vessel, basically, for Kagutaba. Kobayashi's wife is possessed and lights herself on fire and burns down the house. Hori is found a, a day later dead, and the movie ends with the message that Kobayashi is still missing. The end. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if anybody was even able to follow that if you haven't seen this movie. <laughs> I didn't realize that woman fed the little girl fetuses. I don't remember. Yeah, that was the implication because when he's talking to the historian, he says that they fed a medium baby monkeys. Do you remember this? Yes, I do remember that. And so I think like that is how he comes to the conclusion of she must have been stealing these baby, these fetuses to feed them to Kana because she was a medium oh. to re- to res- resurrect basically Kagutaba. I thought she was bringing the fetuses fetuses to Kagutaba in the forest 
I oh, didn't yeah. realize it was to the little girl. That's disgusting. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's where, so that's the whole plot of that movie. Um, Felicia, let's start with you. Thank Fully. Uh, what did you, what did you think about this movie? Okay. So there were elements I liked and things I didn't. So the things I did, I thought the acting was pretty good. Like I thought people yeah. seemed, I thought all the acting was good. Even the, the conspiracy theory guy, I was like, oh God, this guy's going to be zany. But I thought that he acted fearful enough and kind of out there enough that it didn't make me think this guy's just ridiculous. Um, so I thought the acting was good. I think the de- idea is creepy and there were some really creepy elements. I, I found myself kind of tightening up when, you know, like bracing myself bracing myself for something that's going to happen. But the problem is it never happened. Yeah, I totally. Think I did that enough. And so this is what I didn't like is maybe they needed to like chop it up a little bit or make it shorter, make the pacing. Maybe that's what's off because I was constantly like, it was creepy enough that it had me there. And I'm like, Ooh, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? But then nothing really happened. Even for example, the actress How many times is she going to fall on the ground and scream and then wake up and go, oh, I don't remember doing that. Or then grunt and be uh, and then wake up. Oh, I don't remember doing that to the point where I'm not even scared now that she's doing that. You know, it's actually just irritating because I have to turn down the TV because it's so significantly louder. (laughs) Um, And so then by the time we get to the end, I wasn't scared. I wasn't shocked. Um, So that's how I feel about the movie. Yeah. Okay. I mean, same. I was uh, massively disappointed because people talk about this being like one of the best found footage movies of all time and how it's so scary. And I was very disappointed. And so it sucks because it got hyped up for me. Right. Yeah. But I'm still like, God, I don't know what these I just don't know what people see. And I mean, if you like it good for you, that's totally like that's fine. I just don't understand. I don't think it's that scary. And I love atmosphere. Mm. And like, I did not like you're saying, like, I feel like they they built up some good atmosphere in the beginning. Like, I feel like the first third had some good moments where I was like, oh, shit, something's going to happen. This is scary. Or like, this is a very creepy moment. And then it just like lost all of its momentum. I felt like through the rest of the movie, like it just it became so. Yeah. Like, oh, we're going to go back to her. Like, how many times are we going to go to this lady's house? (laughs) <laughs> and she's going to turn you away like this is OK, I'm over it. Or like, you know, even going back to the people who did the sound analysis, I think we only did that twice. But yeah, like, when we went back to do it a second time, I was like, I get it. Like we I don't we don't need to do this again. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, yeah, I agree. It just was like and there were parts that I also liked. I thought there were moments that were really creepy. There were, you know. When when we saw the video of her sleeping, I was like, oh, shit, this is like my nightmare. I'm so excited to see what's going to happen. And I'm ready for something scary. But again, nothing happened. Yeah, it was like she just walked out onto her balcony and, and walked back in. <laughs> she, yeah, exactly. she, cro- she crocheted real quick out there. <laughs> she doing some crafts. <laughs> <laughs> doing some crafts at night went back to sleep and then we go and look at them and it's just like, so what? I guess, you know, like it. I don't know. And about halfway through the movie, I was feeling like, oh, I like kind of all these different elements and how they're like tying them together. But by the end, I felt like it I I, it had lost me. I was like, that that was too many things. And I don't know what's happening. And it stopped making sense (laughs) to me. And I just it was too much. And you lost me. Yeah, it needed some like real like i even was when they boated out to the area you know for her to do the ceremony to hopefully get the beast out of her the actress to hopefully get the demon out of her and they were in the boat and they did the little ceremony in the boat i was like something's gonna happen maybe in the water no just yeah everyone's screaming running screaming running the, the the fetus the blurry fetus things that, that i mean that was pretty cool and then it was gone i was like okay and the dead dogs i'm like okay maybe something's gonna happen again but yeah yeah it just was like Mm -mm. but what i did not that like whole you know nighttime vision um kana with the fetuses i saw saw a handful of people online saying um that is 
like the best part of this movie and this movie is worth watching just for that scene fucking hard disagree bro i <laughs> like it's not good it's not it looks bad it looks bad and maybe if you had watched it in 2005 when this was made you'd be like "Ooh, creepy that looks creepy but not now you know and the only piece of information that i have on this movie is because it's just one I, I've never seen this before. I went to the trivia tab on IMDb and there was no trivia tab. There wasn't. Oh, really? I've never seen that. Have you? No. I mean, I've had two pieces of trivia before, but not. Yeah, like, I don't think I've seen zero pieces. Zero. I didn't even have a section for trivia. So um, this is the only thing I have is like in 2020, this movie found its way to American homes through Shudder because it was put on Shudder. Um, and I think that they were watching it. People were watching it maybe on YouTube or other things. Um, but then people could really access it in 2020. So, like, I don't know. I don't know when people, you know, here in America were able to watch this movie. But I, I just can't understand how you would have watched it in 2020 and been like, this movie is worth it for that one scene. Like, I just the idea is really obviously creepy. I love that. I was down with it. But then it just didn't look it just looked really cheesy and bad. And I feel like it yeah. ruins the realism of the found footage idea entirely because everything else is so rooted in realism. And then you've got this like very obviously fake. Yes. Thing. And I just was like. Yeah. My reaction not. to it was like, oh, ooh, look at all those little fetuses crawling on her. I mean, yeah. that, that was it. That was like, it. you know. Yeah. <laughs> Like, okay, that's the end of that. And then that scene just ends. Like, nothing happens. They nothing just happens leave. after that. She just has a bunch of fetuses all over. Like, what? Yeah. And nobody, like, dies or gets seriously injured or anything. They just, like, bring them back to the hospital. That was it. And so I'm like, okay, fucking weird. It just kept feeling like nothing was happening. Yes. In the beginning, I agree with you about the beginning. It started off so good. I started watching with both of my older daughters. And I knew... Obviously, it wasn't a true story. They didn't. I didn't tell them anything about it, just that it was a found footage movie. They kept going, wait, is this real? Like, wait a second. And they were all bought into it. So I was just kind of smiling. I didn't yeah. want to tell them it wasn't real. So I just let them keep thinking it. So at the beginning, they were like, whoa. And then even the the little clips of um, the little girl who can, you know, knows what's in the pictures, that has that psychic ability. And everyone's like, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh. And then... They're both like, well, my one daughter fell asleep. The other one's my <laughs> oldest stayed yeah. awake with me. But and she is the scaredy cat. She's the one I have to beg to watch a horror movie with me. She's scared of everything. She wasn't scared. She said it felt a little creepy, but it yeah. also got boring. That's what she said. <laughs> yeah, totally. Like, I feel like there was a little atmosphere built up, but then it they just like. They, they stretched it out for so long that they really just um, yes. it just disintegrated or like dissipated all the tension and atmosphere from the movie. Um, I loved that part in the beginning, though, to just hit maybe some of our like favorite moments. Yeah, I did love that section about Kana in the classroom and her like psychic abilities. I was like, yeah. oh, this is like fucking weird and creepy. And when she like makes the water and there's like a hair in it and they're like, yeah, this is human hair. Like they went and tested it and they were like, I, I don't know that that really hooked me more than any other part of the story. I was like, what the fuck is this? Where did that come from? Like, what is what's happening here? And I was so excited and I really liked it that it did tie back to the village later. Like as soon as they were like, oh, that village is at the bottom of a dam now. I was like, fuck, it's that fucking she was like tapping into somebody there. And like pulled the water mm. from the village with like a uh, hair. I'm just getting that now. Okay. <laughs> I thought they never yeah. just went back to it. She like, oh, yes. Yeah. No, I thought that was like a really good tie in and setup because it really made me be like, what the fuck? And I loved the like weird psychic child like thing of it. And so, again, I didn't really mind these kind of disparate parts, especially we're getting these like clips of TV shows and stuff that he didn't even produce. We're just like pulling them as evidence. I liked that setup. It just, we got lost. Yeah, I liked the little boy and the mom hidden. She wouldn't let anyone talk and he's peeking out of the window and it got me intrigued. What's going on? And all you hear is babies crying, but there's no babies there. 
Um, yeah, I like this whole baby kid demon situation. Even when they did the demon dance thing, when they showed the old footage of it, um, I was cur- I was very curious when it started because that all that creepy sort of oh, <laughs> this is not pagan i suppose i guess but, kind of, but you know what i'm saying like ancient i don't yeah, know like he was like ritualistic ritualistic yeah um and i thought oh this is creepy these masks and they're doing this thing what's gonna happen and, yeah. and then the, the person starts screaming and then it was done i'm like oh all right yep that was also boring like yeah nothing happened nothing so. happened okay <laughs> <laughs> i i did like um, whenever she would, uh, Marika, whenever she would get like into that like screaming mode, but then she would come out of it like that last time in the forest where mm-hmm. she just like, <laughs> like wakes up and she's like, hi or something like that creeped me out. I like, I liked the way that that happened, but again, it did happen like too many times for it to really be effective. Yeah. She's a good actress. She did really good at it. But yeah, that last one when she was screaming, yeah. I wasn't scared. I was anticipating nothing was going to happen, but hoping something was going to happen. Or when she was in the car and she's like, uh, you know, doing that. I'm like, oh, God. The first time that happened also, I thought, oh, this is creepy. Like, yeah. I liked the sound that she was making and it was weird. But yeah, like you just do it too many times. It loses its luster. I also did like um, the footage of her at the shrine. Like, I liked all these like setups where it was like she was there and she saw the thing in the background but we didn't see it immediately we had to go back and watch it again and it showed us that there was a i felt like that one was more well done looking Mm -hmm. than the like later kana with the fetuses like that one i felt like was more believable and um i i just liked that one and that was creepy i liked that one too that was and that was near the beginning Mm -hmm. yeah and we were like oh my god this is gonna be so scary yeah no 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 I don't know if you needed that conspiracy theory guy, actually. No, I really think he takes away from it yeah. a lot because it, he is over the t- I feel like his acting wasn't necessarily bad, but it was like the choices made to like the directing choices. I'm like, OK, you've just made this guy into seeming like some, you know. Crazy person, and it's like it felt almost comical in moments where it was like a, it felt like yeah. a really detracted from it yeah because if they wanted someone running out into the forest so they could find all those dead dogs and stuff it could have been her the actress yeah and like we didn't need him really at all like Mm -hmm. i feel like you could have other events happen that lead them to those things absolutely yeah because even though that he knew kana and so he wanted to try to find her i don't know i don't i don't think you needed any of that yeah, and he also was like a very I know that this is probably what they were going for, but he was so um unpredictable that I just had no idea like what he like who he was, what his intentions were or anything because he constantly was doing weird stuff. Like he attacked Marika on the stage the first time we see her doing like a TV interview about the shrine thing. Then we see that he like seems to really care about Kana and like wants to find her, but he I don't know, it just was like that part was, I feel like, too hard to follow. And then you've got this entire, like, dropped. I, it's not dropped, but I don't really understand that, like, seven people went and hung themselves in a park. Oh, like, yeah. Why? And what? Was it? I think it was, like, the people that lived close to the yeah, woman, but why? That's what I got, too. The, the, the Everywhere where that woman and her son lived, someone that was, like, a neighbor would kill themselves. I yeah. mean, they made that clear, but why? Why? Yeah. I Yeah, I'm left with like a lot of questions. Because there's just like evil? I don't know. Are they possessed also? Like some people seem to get possessed and and like at the very end, his wife, right, is possessed and lights herself mm-hmm. on fire. Mm. But like maybe being in the presence of that boy causes them to kill themselves maybe it just didn't really like connect and i i feel like they landed somewhere in the middle where they like didn't explain enough but they also explained too much at the same time like they they tried to do both i feel like and it also suffered from that 
Yes. I agree with that. Did you have any other moments that you liked or you felt like were creepy? Um, I did like the them breaking into the house and finding all those crocheted things everywhere and all the masks and she hung herself. I mean, I thought this was a, a really cool kind of uh, set and yeah. it was creepy. Maybe if we had more of that, maybe if they went and they were searching and discovered some of the clues in there versus the, with the conspiracy guy. Cause I thought that that was pretty cool. And then I was kind of shocked that they had the dead child there and they showed her a lot. They usually don't do that in movies very often. Yeah. She was dead. And so at first I didn't think she was, I thought she was unconscious because of how much Me they too. were showing her and the little boy was just hunched behind her. I thought, Oh my God, this is creepy. What this poor little boy went through. So I thought that was a pretty cool thing. Yeah, I agree. And I forgot about how when they're in the house, they have all those like masks. I do feel like the masks are creepy. And Mm -hmm. earlier you also see, I think, like drawings of them. I can't remember if the psychic guy or Kana drew them or somebody drew them. And so that was like a creepy imagery thing to me. But yeah, that was that was like about it. Yeah. And they definitely went. Gosh, they kept saying, let his name's not the conspiracy theorist, but let's go back to the conspiracy theorist theorist house. Let's go back. I'm going to ask him another question. I'm going to go back. Let's just not. Let's just not go back yeah. anymore. <laughs> no, I'm going to go back to her house. The lady. Let's go back. Let's go back. I'm going to go back. No, no. Let's just cut. <laughs> Remove. <Yeah. laughs> Figure something else out. Let's just move forward. Yeah. Like, yeah. if you're going to go back to anybody, it probably should be this, like, historian guy who gave you all the fucking information, you know? Yeah. Like, that guy clearly knows what he's talking about and has given you so much, you know? He gives yeah. us, like, the whole story. We're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe more of that, because it almost felt creepy. I know it was creepy that we were watching a found footage video, right? The video itself. I liked the beginning and stuff, how it had the video and how everything was set up that I thought that was really cool. Um, but this guy with that other video of this ancient ceremony or ritual, I felt almost like, Ooh, they're going to be cursed watching that. Mm, Whatever's going on. But no, no. (laughs) Yeah. I think that's the thing is like, as we're talking, there's too many angles. There's like, there's like the demon angle. Where it's like you've got these people who are trying to resurrect this demon. Then you've got this weird curse angle, which is what like everybody who lives next to this woman dies, I guess. Yeah. Or maybe is possessed and kills themselves. We don't really know. But then you've got like this psychic angle also, which we're trying to hit with like Kana and the guy, Hor- Mr. Hori. And it's like too many things all in one. And like, I feel like if they had really just gone in on the like ritual and the like ritual from this old village because i feel like that was some of the strongest stuff to yeah me. i feel like they it could have been more successful or, or we at least wouldn't have gotten like so lost and bored throughout it yeah i totally agree mm-hmm. and was the woman who had the little boy was she the woman who was possessed in that ritual yeah okay okay so that's so that's why she's trying to conjure that spirit is because something happened within that ritual. So now she's kind of connected and wants to bring it back because it wasn't really cool, clear. Sorry. Was not really clear to me why she wanted to bring it back? No, I was lost on this also. Right. Okay. I mean, I think the I think what they're trying to get across is like there was the demon and then they sealed the demon like deep in the ground. And they were doing rituals every year or something to keep it at bay, to keep it happy. But you can use it also as like a weapon. Like you would like unleash this demon on your enemies and it would like fuck them up. That's what they said like okay. kind of earlier on. But then she was the one who was possessed. But then is she not possessed anymore? And that's why she has to like resurrect him. Like, I don't know. I was really lost on this part. Because why? Yeah. Why? What, what are we what? doing? It just didn't, I, I just didn't make sense from like a motivation standpoint, I guess. Yeah, I agree. And it, it, if she was possessed by Kagutaba, like what, I, like it doesn't make sense. She can't be. Cause then why would you be trying to resurrect? He's already there. I don't know. It's and very, he's in the boy. So she successfully resurrected him into the boy. 
I think so. I think that's okay. at the very end. Yeah, because we see, you know, his face change in that footage and he looks like the mask. So um, why did she they kill were herself? Junko? Yeah. I don't know. Did she hang herself? No. Okay. I don't know if people if you're listening, and you have answers for us, please. <laughs> yes. Send them our way. Email us. Put them in the comments. We'd love to know more. Because there's too lot. much more. Know when to cut it. Right. <laughs> you got to edit. Be mindful of your pacing. <laughs> <laughs> Just enough. Just enough. Just enough. Information is good. Um, yeah. This was sad. I'm sad that it wasn't. Better. I was like regretting. It's like I should have chosen something else <laughs> that I had seen that I've seen, but that's okay. We have to watch it at some point, I guess. Yeah, and if it wasn't this past week, it would have had to been in the future. Mhm. We saved our future yeah. selves. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really bummed at how disappointed I was. I literally like have no research. Like I that was the one piece of information I could find on that and then I did some searching around and I just don't think there's much because it's um, a Japanese movie um, that was made in 2005 that people really haven't like gotten behind until kind of recently so I don't know maybe I was just like not looking in the right places I also searched to see like if Kagutaba was like a real demon no it looks like they just made up the story entirely for the movie so nothing there either <laughs> like, i wonder I if nothing. we just watch too much horror that things just don't scare us anymore i had some people suggesting stuff and i uh, for, uh yeah i had some people i know that suggesting stuff and so then i always go and look at the trailer a little bit and i'm some of the things i'm watching this trailer i'm like oh my this looks like really corny mm, yeah it's like this is the most terrifying thing i've ever seen like, oh. <laughs> it sucks doesn't it it's like it's yeah. terrible to not be scared i want to be scared it's like always our goal both of us we like actually like being put on edge and to be scared and so it sucks when you go into something that you think is gonna do it and it's like doesn't yeah i yeah fuck wow oh well had to try had to give it a try it wasn't terrible no no mm -mm. but that's that <laughs> it was it like I hung in hung in there through the end but yeah it did feel a little bit like a drag like a drug definitely I was real tired by the end of it I was trying to yeah. stay awake yeah hmm sorry oh no that's okay <laughs> that's okay <sighs> we win some we lose some yeah it's right there in the middle. It wasn't so terrible that we have fun talking about how absolutely terrible it was, right? Exactly. Or, or great, obviously. So it's kind of right there in the middle. I'm curious how, how it'll be scored. Yeah, and I'm also like, I'm excited to dive more into some of these other found footage movies this month because I love found footage. It's truly one of my favorite subgenres yeah. of horror i think it does a really great job i'm sure i've talked about this before but i think it just puts you in the driver's seat basically like you're watching through a point of view that movies don't usually put you in like you know you're kind of watching a story but when you're in a situation like this where you're watching somebody just like run around a forest and shooting whatever's happening in front of them like i love that kind of stuff because it feels more real and it like primes me to be more scared but unfortunately, this one just didn't hit the mark. So we'll maybe, do. Oh, sorry. Um, no, I interrupted you. All I was going to say is maybe we should do a, a found footage summer. Mm. Just uh, June and July. <laughs> uh, so okay. we could watch more of them, like yeah. more found footage movies. Because I was like kicking myself. I was like, oh, I could have picked this or this or this. And like instead, I picked this movie that I hadn't seen, which I wanted to see it, you know. But I was like, I could, uh, there, there were better picks, you know? Yeah, because I like it too. So maybe just June, July, found footage. Yeah. And so we can watch more. All right. Okay. I'm fucking in, I think. Okay, let's do we'll, it. We'll see. Maybe we by the end of the month, pivot. we'll be like, yeah. <laughs> I, always, like, okay, we're done. I always post the monthly agenda late. And we're already like six or seven days into the month. So we can, we could, we could change 
within there. Yeah. We'll see how we feel after the patron pick if we want to yes. keep going. Yeah. All right. Are we going to rate it? Yeah, I mean, let's we do are. It. We are going to rate it. We can do it right now. <laughs> okay. Do you want to go first? Yeah, I can go first. Okay. All right. I'm going to give this movie a 2.75. And where I got that from is I gave Evil Dead Rise a 2.8. And uh, I think I liked, I just really enjoyed that main actress's performance. Um, So I was engaged with that. And, but I liked this more. So that was kind of along the lines of Cube. Sorry, Tony, I don't mean to say that. Um, (laughs) I don't need to bring oh, that up. you know what? Actually, let's, let's, please pretend I didn't say that. I'm just kidding. But I was looking at the taking of Deborah Logan. So I, yeah. I gave it 2.7. And I was trying to remember. And I remember specifically, I, if I remember correctly, talking about the taking of Deborah Logan, that I really only liked that last visual of her. And I was kind of struggling throughout. Where this, I really did like elements of it. Um, I, I think that it's... I mean, it was promising. I, I definitely didn't like it as much as my threes. That was yeah. that was the problem. And it's such a bummer. I'm just looking really quick. I, I don't, don't have any other 2.8s because I was trying to remember. I was trying to think, do I really like it? I have a 2.85. Oh, yeah. Oh, A Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, I was trying to think, did I really even like it more or less than Evil Dead Rise? I definitely like the concept better. I like the found footage. I like yeah. the, that creepiness. Uh, but for all the reasons we talked about, I think I'm going to have to give it a 2.75. Hmm. Okay. Um, That's interesting. I think I'm also going to give it a 2.75. <gasps> oh, and really? I also was looking at Evil Dead Rise, and I keep questioning, like, do, did I like this more than that? Like, maybe just a hair, you know? Yeah. Like, this one was ambitious. It had a lot of ideas that I felt like were good. It had some good, scary, like creepy, I should say, cr- scenes, you know, some moments that I felt like were promising. And I liked the beginning, like, setup, like the first third or whatever. Something about that child psychic shit, like, really, I was like, I've never seen this before, but man, this would be fucking dope to have, like, a better <laughs> blasphemy movie with more of that stuff put into it like there was something really like unsettling about that that I liked a lot and they just like didn't they didn't go in on it the way that I wish they would have or even like the ritual stuff there was like good ideas they just didn't like follow them any one through to the end so I am in the same boat but like I give it a little more than Evil Dead Rise and so but I also looked at the taking of Deborah Logan which I also gave a 2.75 so (laughs) same thing there totally on track like I'm looking at Evil Dead Rise that's where it really got me stuck and I was Mm -hmm. thinking Maybe I scored Evil Dead Rise too high because I really was blown away by that lead actress's performance. If she wasn't in it, I think I would have given it even way less. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I, I agree, too. I'm like, I, I couldn't get it to like a three. No. I think it's fucking a, this is a pass. Like, I'd be like, you don't need to watch it if somebody asked me. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Shoot. There you have Sad. it, guys. <laughs> Sad. Very sad. (laughs) All right. Next week, uh, I picked Cloverfield. So I have no idea if Tony liked it or not. I am. I remember liking it. That's why I'm picking it. Uh, But we'll see on second watch. I'm excited about found footage and aliens. Gosh, I have had nightmares where I wake up and aliens are coming and I'm like, I wasn't ready for it to happen today. So like, I am like all about this. I'm excited. I probably (laughs) shouldn't get, I I was ready yesterday, but today. today. (laughs) That's always what I say in my dream. I wasn't ready for this to happen today. And then that is so funny running and trying to figure out what we're going to do. (laughs) <laughs> but um I don't have my go back <laughs> Yeah, I'm not ready. I knew it was gonna happen, but not today. Um well I maybe I shouldn't be so excited. So hopefully so I don't ruin it for myself. But anyways, Cloverfield, uh if you like us, please do check us out. You can find us on Instagram at two chicks in a horror flick, or you can search us on your favorite social media platform and we will be there. What else, Tani? Um, I like how we're going to swing wildly. I'm just adding this onto the oh, fact yeah. that we're going from this movie to Cloverfield, which <laughs> Cloverfield, 
I don't know how big of a budget it is. I don't I don't remember if it was one of those that started off, but I feel like the budget was probably pretty high from what I'm remembering about the movie. Um, and so we're going with this like we're going from like very low budget foreign film to high budget, <laughs> what feels like a fucking mainstream media yes, movie. Hollywood, Hollywood fucking straight up movie. And uh that'll be interesting to see you know, the juxtaposition there, I feel like. Yeah, I'm curious because... And also, it was so slow, yeah. right? Like, <laughs> no, it was so slow. And I feel like Cloverfield is going to be the fucking opposite from what I remember. <laughs> yes, me too. I do remember, like, the cool thing about the low budget is it feels real real. Right. Like, I don't... I wasn't watching Cloverfield. I don't think anybody watched Cloverfield and thought, did this really happen? <laughs> well, obviously right. not because of what happens, we would know. But yeah, I see what you're saying. I'm curious too. That'll be fun. I was also thinking that about like, because I was, again, looking at found footage movies. I, I was looking at a timeline because I was just curious about how this movie fell in with like paranormal activity, just because they do the same kind of thing at the end Ooh, yeah. a little bit. I won't say what it is to not uh, give spoilers, but there's kind of some some elements that I feel like reflected of Paranormal Activity, but Paranormal Activity was after this. So this was in 2005 and then Paranormal Activity was in the first one, 2007. Oh. But it got me thinking about because I was looking at the whole a whole list of, you know, found footage movies, which actually the first one went back to like 1960. I should have dropped all this trivia in the actual episode. Now that we're towards oh. the end. <laughs> <It's okay>. Sorry. <laughs> um, but I don't think it was like a horror movie i think it was just like an experimental like found footage film mm. and then um you know the blair witch project is kind of the first that was like the uh, the first to really break through and be like a really big deal but there were ones that happened before then um but i was thinking about the ritual because the ritual was on this list right and we haven't done that one it's been on our list for 100 Ooh, years oh yeah and I fucking forgot. I was like, is that found footage? I don't remember it being found footage. Um, and then I, I just wondered if it was maybe so high budget found footage that it didn't register in my brain that way anymore. Yeah, because when you said the ritual, I. Yeah, this movie, I didn't know that this was a found footage movie, though. Maybe it's not. I don't maybe... remember a ton about it, though. Yeah, I don't remember it being found footage. I don't either, really. Okay, I don't, maybe it's maybe it was wrong, but I was thinking about how the high budget found footage kind of it's kind of antithetical. It's like it it undoes what the found footage does, you know? Yeah, no one is going into it thinking that this really happened. It's yeah. just a different, which I think is the cool and scariest part of a found yeah. footage. You know, I always think of the Poughkeepsie tapes. <laughs> yeah, that was on the footage, list, right? It sure was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> God, that movie. <sighs> anyway. Okay. So yeah. anyway, I'm picking yeah. it back up at the end here. If you want to support the show, give us a like, review, and subscribe on whatever podcatcher you're listening to us on. And that's it. So we hope you have such a good night and enjoy this short episode. <laughs> no nightmares. <laughs>